speaker and everyone decided to show up, except for George. Just kidding. He should be here in just a second. Um, but I did want to start with a couple things. Um, George and I were talking this morning. He's going to go into uh, some of the details and some of the things that um, can help us as agents navigate this this time. But I wanted to go through some of the questions that I'm getting and just a basic rundown so that uh, we have we're all on the same page. I'm finding that the biggest problem we're having right now is this the messaging, the messaging going out to agents, the messaging going out to um, the public. It, it's all all over the place. And so that's one thing that we want to just address today. And then George is going to give us a few um, ideas of how to approach it with your clients. And then we'll ask some questions. And at the end of the end of the call, I'll show you two ways that you can actually get the commission paid and we won't even have to worry about it. So a lot of this stuff is more about the hype and the nervousness around it. And we shouldn't really be worried. Things change all the time in our industry. But I want to give you a little bit of background. These are some of the questions and concerns that I'm, I've been getting. Um, we've heard a lot of changes coming. Uh, the big problem, really just how people are interpreting those messages. And they're getting them from outside sources, the media, um, and then even from some agents that I've heard. The articles, they're saying things like uh, buyer's agents are going away, home values are dropping, commissions are sliced in half. Uh, and my favorite one that I saw the other day was homeowners will now make more money finally. So you can see where these messaging gets um, really skewed and how we can have a problem in our industry. So just to give you a little background, if you obviously if you haven't been following uh, what people are saying, but the lawsuit that uh, currently has proposed a settlement. So that means that our, uh, the NAR and the, the plaintiff and the defendant have come to an agreement on what would work for them to settle this outside of uh, the original one. The problem is that the judge still needs to sign off on it. So what we can see is, yes, there'll be some changes. Um, however, we don't know if those changes will be less or there'll be more. We'll just have to watch those as it comes. So we'll we'll make those adjustments. But a couple of things to keep in perspective, um, when these these filings happened in another state, and so a lot of the things we're hearing is based off of what they found from another state. And the problem we're concerned with is that they'll become copycat cases that are filed throughout the country, which we are seeing right now. So it, what we want to really look at is there are some fundamental differences between our state and other states. And I'll just give you one example real quick. Can you one just remind me that... Hey, can 30, you just remind me what state that was that yeah, lawsuit it, was originated sure, it was in from? Missouri. Missouri, okay. Yeah. So here's here's one difference that I want to make sure that we understand from Utah's perspective. So Utah's been doing a lot of things the right way for years. 38 out of the 50 states do not even have a buyer broker agreement. And I'm I've been in the business for 18 years and it's been, we've had a buyer broker agreement for at least 18 years. Uh, I know it's been probably 18 plus years we've had a buyer broker agreement in the state of Utah. So, but 38 states don't even have that and they're not required to use it. So that's one big thing that we have to look at. Um, that's a big change in what we're doing. So let me give you a rundown of what the proposed changes and how it impacts our, our real estate. Number one, uh, the one we've heard the most, compensation offers moved off the MLS. So the biggest thing here is it's not saying we can't still offer compensation. It's just we can't publicly market it on the MLS. So listing brokers and sellers could still continue doing the compensation to buyers, brokers, services, but we just can't do it via the MLS. So we can do it any other way. We can, we can promote it. So sellers can still offer concessions on the MLS. Uh, for buyers closing costs. Now, we might see some changes in the lending industry. They're looking into it. They're talking to their, their attorneys to see how we can incorporate some of that into the loan and make some differences there. So it, it could be a non-issue uh, come the middle of 
July. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, let me see. The biggest thing with the concessions that I wanted to make everyone aware of, because I've heard people say, oh, we'll just put the we'll put the commissions in the concessions in the MLS. The one caveat with putting concessions in the MLS is it cannot be conditioned on whether they're use a buyer broker or not. So I would just be cautious with putting that in the MLS as far as saying these are concessions and they'll cover the, the agent costs because it can't be contingent on using an agent. But there's other ways to do it. It just not through the MLS. The second one is uh, written agreements from the agents acting as buyers is required now. So basically you have to have it in writing before you're showing homes. We've had this in Utah for a really long time. So that shouldn't change for us at all. You need to get a buyer broker agreement signed in order to work with them. You gotta have that commission and uh, negotiate it up front. So that's something that's gonna change for a lot of states where they haven't had to do that. But for us, it's really not that big a deal. And then the last thing on the um, impact would be NAR is going to pay part of the settlement 418 million over the next four years. They've come out and said that the dues aren't going to come up, are going to go up this year. They're not going to go up this year, but we all know that somehow they're going to have to get paid. So not this year though. So don't worry about this year. Um, nothing changes until mid-July. So I don't see George on here yet. Is let me see. No, George. I am I'm I'm here. I've been here since your glorious opening. My glorious opening. Awesome. So um those are just some of the basic facts on that. George wanted to go through a few things and we'll let him talk for a second, and then I can go through how to actually get compensated in a contract. Is the time mine, Mr. Carlson? The time is yours, George. All right. Hey, hey Ray, I, great to be with you. Just uh, I'll be on video in like 30 seconds, but just uh, just real quick. One, one, not very often I get that many. I mean, I, Jason, I don't know how many people you normally have on a compliance call, but I love the fact we're seeing so many people on it. So that's awesome. And then in regards to, to what's been going on, I think – if, if you haven't had an opportunity, I know I did a coaching call on it. Uh, some of it was more scripting. Uh, some of it was not. Uh, some of it was just the the, the basics. But I just want to reiterate just a, a, a few things, which the things I really want to reiterate, the major things are the things in which <clears throat> I guess I would say this. I would say the major things I'm most concerned about are how you're responding to the things that we're, we're, we're doing. And I think that the way in which we're responding has so much to do with the conversations going well or not going so well. I have to tell you, just I just walked out of a, a, a doctor's appointment. I've been battling this bronchitis thing, and I had just walked out of this appointment. And of course, I'm sitting there with the nurse going, I got to go, I got to go. And of course, what does she want to do? She wants to talk about the, the and she wants to talk about, let me get my, she wants to talk about this commission structure and what does it mean? And her her husband's an agent at this other organization and, and things. So two things I want to do today. I want to just role play just a few different scenarios, which I've been doing with a few people of how to answer them. Certainly, we can talk about some of the compliance specifically in regards to how we're going to manage those things. But I've had so many different phone calls, so many different conversations with not only broker owners across the country, but of course, with agents. I feel like we've got a pretty good handle on 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 what to do. And you've seen certainly all the different talking heads to all different sorts of trainers who are kind of giving their opinion. But I also want to, I think he's on the call. I think I saw him in there as I was scanning through who was on the call. But uh, my, our, my dear friend, I coach uh, with our coach. He, I guess I'm his coach, but uh, he was coaching me even yesterday a little bit. And that was Al Galvis. And I really appreciated what Al said. He said, he said the three C's. He said you got to cast a vision, which is always in the midst of chaos, guys. You've got to cast a vision of what the future holds and what it looks like and how this is going to play out. But number two, you need to do it in a calm and number three, a confident manner. So look, if you're calm, if you're confident and you cast a vision, you are going to do some really good stuff. 
And, and that really summarizes what needs to happen in the process of this. So mechanically and pragmatically, yes, everything that I just reiterate, everything that Jason said, we had a conversation, I think a few days ago, we had a conversation this morning as he was making notes to what to talk about. I just want to add a few more things to that. And then we'll, we'll do just a, a few different scenarios of how I would be answering these questions. I hope that that will be helpful. And then of course, we'll open it up. We've got nearly, I think 60 something people on the call. Uh, and if there's some questions that people have specific, but let me just add a few things. The question is, is one of the questions is, okay, do, does that mean that I, I had one of our, of course, our great agents, Justin Udy yesterday, call me and say, so are you telling me that you know, sometime in July, if this thing gets signed off, and again, I just want to reiterate, that's if it gets signed off on, right? The judge has to approve everything that's going on in this process. But let's assume that it's going to be signed off, that everybody's agreed to this 418 million bucks. You know, those of you who didn't watch the NAR little message from the NAR president, they talked about the fact they could appeal it, yes. But then there'd be all these, as Jason said, there'd be all these little lawsuits across the, the across the the country and hammering down on on companies it's the reason why you saw century 21 but collectively called anywhere which formerly known as Rilogy, if you're not aware of that uh make their settlement think, for 83 million that of course covers us because people wondered are we under that two billion two billion dollar threshold and the answer is uh, no we're not hence why we're in even in this this uh utah state uh 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 uh, lawsuit that just came out about a month ago or three weeks ago or so uh, we were named in the paper and different things why because you guys kick buttons names and doing a ton of business and keep doing what you're doing but we are covered under century 21 so the nice thing is is that i have to tell you if, um, i know many of you get bothered by the franchise but i'll tell you one thing uh, i'll name the companies that i get concerned about equity realty path presidio uh, there, these are all companies that do over $2 billion worth of sales volume. Uh, there's no coverage. I, 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 I would never wish harm on another organization, but I will tell you, uh, I have high concerns of these organizations that are unbranded, uh, are not part of the class action settlements and are doing over $2 billion worth of real estate sales volume that that would have to be very nerve wracking if not only if I'm an agent in the organization, but number two, if I'm one of the owners, uh, because I think there is no end in sight for those organizations as to uh, what will come back to them and they have no get out of jail card. Uh, so if there was ever a time where you wanted to complain about your uh, fee structure or your franchise fees or promotional fees, as we call them, uh, this is a time that I have to tell you that th those very things are protecting not only this organization, uh, but you personally and the business model that we have and, and where we're going. So uh, I, at first I thought it was ridiculous. I have to tell you on the onset, when I heard him settling, uh, as I've gotten deeper into it, boy, I feel richly blessed by the fact of not only our organization, but individually to our family, all the way down to our families. It's uh, We're very fortunate that the nonsense of this suit uh, is being covered in the settlements that uh, anywhere slash Century 21 corporately uh, or globally has done. So setting that aside, I just, I would, I would point out that yes, you're going to have to have conversations either by text, email, voice, voicemail in relationship to a conversation with every time you're having a showing, uh, if you're going to serve your seller properly. I think that you're going to have conversations with your sellers to talk about the impact of this inability to advertise what the commissions are and ensuring that in slower markets, even though, you know, we're having some slight recovery, we're going to have a, 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 a time here where we're going to have to take a step back and say, okay, we, you know what, most sellers are going to continue to pay some type of a commission uh, out to those buyer's agents. And the reason being is because uh, they need them. It's just somewhat like builders, builders in the tough times go, oh, we'll, we'll cooperate in the rough in the good times they go out ah, we don't need to cooperate and i think you're going to see a little bit of that a game if this suit and this this settlement stays in place i think you're going to see a lot of that game being played it's all going to be dependent upon the strength of the market is it a buyer market is it a seller's market and that's going to be the game that you're going to have to play today but I just want to point out, as I said in my coaching call uh, on Monday, so five days ago, I said these things. I said, 
one, be aware of the problem. Don't, and I appreciate the fact that you guys are paying attention and you're not just putting your head in the sand and completely ignoring it. Number two, okay, what's the impact of that problem? Certainly we're analyzing that. More things will come forth. Third though is, okay, what are some of the solutions? Which, you know, Jason's talked to them. I'm gonna talk about some of the scripts in a minute. But then the fourth is, there's a real opportunity. And the thing that I appreciated with my conversation with Justin Udy is he said, gosh, he goes, I actually, I don't know if he's on this call, but he said, I think I'm going to double side more deals. I said, I know you will. Uh, I, I was talking to an agent yesterday. I won't mention her, but but I, she was talking about the fact that even now she goes, I'm kind of shocked. I'm double siding a deal. And it's all in relationship at some level or another to what's going on right now with these commissions. So I think that one of the more huge opportunities that I don't want you to forget about Although some of you may have been very focused on the buying side of this business, man, th we are the leader. This organization is the leader in the state of getting listings. It is a very rare year that we are not lopsided on the listing side versus the buyer side of sales. I, am, I have always been so proud of each one of you as an organization from place of an organization that we have normally been basically a 50-50 ratio between buyers and sellers. Nothing would make me more pleased to see the fact that we went up to 60, 70 plus percent sellers, not because, not because I think you can't make money with buyers, but what I do know that if you control the listing, you control the buyer and you will have better chances of double siding those deals. And you will also be in control of the income that you earn. So if there, I, I, I know that myself and Jason and John and Jeremy and Ruby and others and Tammy, I, I know that we're going to work very diligently to say, okay, let's create some real training specific to how to not only answer these questions if I'm the buyer's agent, and how do I deal with my buyer? How do I negotiate these situations with the seller and with the other agent on the other side? And on the flip side, how do you respond and how do you explain yourself and how this process works to a seller in today's new market, specifically starting in, in July. But I also know that there's a lot of people because the media has you know, lied, the media has tried to create fear, the media has tried to manipulate the message. And in the regards to doing that, they has made it to where we, as professionals, are going to have to answer questions. And, and I just wanna point out to you, you that I consider us professionals Right, and amateurs for you know ignore issues. Uh, amateurs don't care what happens. Amateurs make this a hobby, but when you're a professional, right, you're practicing. You're practicing and rehearsing scripts, dialogues. You're you're practicing your messages. You're practicing the way in which you do business because you know that you're a professional. So, as we move through this. I just would echo to every single one of us, myself included, that man, this is an opportunity to get better. And maybe you didn't want to get better, but if you're going to be in this business, you got to get better. And then how you get better is you start practicing and you start getting the answers. You start looking for the opportunity, recognizing there's a problem. There's an impact to that problem. There's solutions to that problem, but there's also massively, so I hope that you would be encouraged that there's opportunities through these problems. And if you can turn that adversity into your benefit, I think that if you'll look at it that way, I think that you're in a really good space mentally and emotionally to say, all right, where are we taking this thing? Where are we going with this thing? Right? How do I take the opportunity? Well, again, opportunity, number one, get better at what you do. Number two, focus more on taking listings. Make it a priority. Those of you who have prioritized buyers, Man, just an hour a day. The many times I've helped people convert over the years to being more on the listing side versus the buying side has been the fact that they spend one hour a day at least, but one hour just focusing on taking listings. Keep doing everything that you're doing. Pound out and work out those buyer deals, but spend one hour a day focused on getting and taking a listing. Just one hour. Watch what will happen and the momentum shift that will happen, especially over these next three or four months, because none of this is effective ultimately until July. So what if the next three or four months, you really dialed in this idea of, man, I am going to make sure I have a solid business model for me personally, that's solidly at that 50-50 ratio, 50% buyers, 50% listings. Okay. With that, 
I just want to pose a few things. This is how I would say it. If, and I'm going to give you the lengthy version. I'm going to give you the 10 second version. The first version is going to be one or two minutes. The second version is going to be a solid, you know, 20 to 30 seconds. So I'm going to start first though, the first one. And I'm going to incorporate some of the things that J Jason has said that'll be in this message. So the question will be is, hey, what? let's just say it's the buyer or seller. Tell me, what's up with commissions? I hear that buyer's agents don't earn any money anymore. It's the end of 6% commissions. It's the end of you know, high commissions. Prices are going to come down because of it. All, all the different modes of that question. I'm going to try to encompass it in one general statement here. Whether it's buyer or seller, I'm going to say, hey, you know what? Great question. There's gotten a lot of attention. And here I'm here to share with you the truth versus the fiction the fear that has been put out there into the marketplace versus the accuracy and the real perspective that is true within this industry today so first and foremost it's not the end of buyer's agents number one number two it's not the end of commissions being paid to buyer's agents and of course listing agents the only difference is is that it was the listing company that used to pay the commission to a buyer's agent. Now, although that would happen at the title company, it seemed seamless. It was under our escrow or under our instruction that the other company would be paid. Today, it will be the seller who pays those commissions or it will be the buyer who comes in George, I think he froze. Yeah, he froze. We can't hear anything. All right, give him just a half a second to get back on. Probably won't even realize it. He's probably still talking, right? <laughs> probably. Just a second. All right, I think you'll get back on here. Gotta love Wi Fi. Just one second. Guys, I'm sorry. My phone overheated. <laughs> I, I don't know if I've ever had that, but I knew to write when I ended. So I apologize, guys. Hopefully you're still there. All Just right. Just like its owner. So buyers are going to be paid through the seller. Yeah, exactly. Overheating. Overheating. All right. So just, okay, so it, 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 buyers are going to be paid, like buyer, buyer agents going to be paid from the seller and the selling agent, the listing agent is going to be paid off from the seller also. So for, for me, if I'm the buying side, I'm going to be speaking to the fact of, look, you got three, you've got a couple of choices. Number one, we're going to include this as part of the negotiations in the sale because they're not offering a commission, but we're still going to try to incorporate it if I'm working with the buyer and I'm the buyer's agent. Number two, they're, they're, at, they're, they're offering a commission I've made and I've called and I've verified those calls and confirmation that they're offering a commission. Or number three, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Buyer, you're going to need to bring those dollars in at closing. But look, the, mod, the major focus is going to be here is to get the seller to pay for those things and include them as part of the transaction. And that would be the first part. Second part, if I'm talking to a seller, would be saying, look, Let's look at the environment. Let's look at our market today. If you don't offer a commission, are you truly going to get the activity that you desire? Are you going to get the best chance of selling your home? Are you going to get the best price for your home if in today's marketplace you're not offering it? With over 7,000 homes or even nearly 8,000 if we include Washington County and across the Wasatch Front, 
is there enough activity in today's market to warrant the fact that you're refusing to pay a commission? Well, if I'm talking to a seller today, I'm going to be telling them, look, don't be stupid. Let's be wise. we got to be really smart with what we're doing. And I'm going to talk about the intelligence of offering a commission in today's marketplace because I want the best chance of selling it. There is no question that in a white hot market, which then would be considered a seller's market if we're talking opposite of what it is today, but because buyers and buyer's agents are really the driving force of the market today, you can request, require, and offer those commissions. When it is a different market, you're right. You're going to have to incorporate that into the sale if you're the buying side. If you're the selling side, you could say, you know what? Not paying it, not offering it. Hey, you want to negotiate it into the deal? Great. You want to raise the price? Knock yourself out. Make sure it appraises. But we're not in that space right now. So if I was sitting with a seller, I just cannot imagine a moment where I would not be offering a commission. There may be some one-off reasons. There may be some exclusions to that. But I really believe that the focus point should be that you're encouraging a seller today to be wise in their decisions, to give themselves the best chance of getting their home sold. And if they do so, then the fact is, is that if they're going to do that, they're going to pay a commission. Now, like as I was talking to Justin, one of the things I talked to Jason today about is we're going to create some little mini scripts that are the scripts that you can just cut and paste, send out to the agent if you're the listing agent or the script that you can just send out to the list to the, or if you're a listing agent, you're sending out to the buyer's agent. If you're the buyer's agent, you're sending it to the listing agent saying basically, hey, is there going to be a commission involved in this transaction or paid in this transaction? If I'm the listing agent, I'm going to then commissions. I want them to know what that commission is. So I'm going to send a text. We're going to write some scripts and some dialogues that you can just cut and paste and send it out on any listing that you're listing and send it out to whatever it is that you're willing to offer. If it's zero commissions, negotiate the commissions, or this is the commissions, which one is it? Number two, again, or go back to the buying side. That's what I want to ask. Or number uh, number two, if I'm the listing agent, man, here's my offer. This is what we're doing. Gosh, come in and sell this thing. There's an opportunity for you to earn a commission. And let's make sure we have those scripts working uh, from that standpoint. So for me, again, I would just, again, I go back to what I started with. Be calm, be confident, and cast a vision of what this market is. Guys, in the midst of chaos, I cannot echo again enough times. When there is chaos, over-communicate and cast the vision of where we're going. Guys, the greatest work that I've tried to do over these last two years with this really tough market that we've been working within is to cast a vision that it is possible to sell real estate, that you can sell real estate, that you're gonna be okay if you prospect, you're gonna take care of your future, your dreams, your family is gonna be all okay if you do certain activities. My job is to constantly cast the vision. Your job is to consistently and constantly cast the vision. Don't underestimate the magnitude of importance to casting the vision to your clients and letting them see clearly. And I would just back it up with, again, what Al Galvis talked to me about yesterday, calm and confident, calm and confident, but cast the vision and get, be the calm in the storm, be the certainty in the storm, cast the vision when no one else can see, make sure that you are the one doing that. With that being said, I want to open it up, and I hope I'm not opening up Pandora's box. I don't think I am, but we still have, of course, a number of people on this call. Gosh, 75 people on this call. Is there any particular question that you have in regards to how would you answer blank, maybe a little bit of role play, or number two, is there any compliance or, hey, what about this, or what do you think is going to happen here? Um, I will actually, before I open that up and before you ask, I just want to bring one more thing up. We're looking into the, we're, we're looking into the idea of, we're looking into the idea of making it to where in the agent remarks, you can say, if you're the listing saying something like this in the agent remarks on the MLS, which would be this willing to work. Seller is willing to work with buyer's agents. Now, we're not mentioning an amount. We're not mentioning a commission. We're just simply stating the fact that the seller is willing to work with an agent. And if that is the case, I think that gives you, again, another little edge that we can 
put out there as a seller and representing a seller, knowing that buyer's agents will be taken care of, but not mentioning any type of actual fee structure that would have to come later. We're looking into that as a possibility and we're getting some legal counsel on that. And also we're going to uh, visit with the board, uh, the, the MLS itself. All right. So with that being said, uh, let me open it up to, to anything, to any, any questions, thoughts, comments that anybody might have. Here's my thoughts, Brenda Lee Jones. Thank Hello, you Brenda. so much. For, thank you so much for your leadership and guidance. And I am so on board with everything you just said. Business as usual. We need to get on board with our sellers and it's our leadership, our guidance, our clarity and our power and our mindset to get our heads around this because we have been doing this in Utah always. We're always transparent and we Correct. need to share that. That this whole lawsuit came in another state far, far away and we just need to reiterate that with our sellers and I just love uh, being here at Century 21 Everest, we have that protection, and I so appreciate this this uh, whole meeting today to let us be on board, and we're going to power forward business as usual. It is. Yep. Well said. Perfectly said. And you're said, Jason said, I just reiterate, we've already been doing it, right? I mean, that's part of the script, guys. We've already been doing it right for 20, and by the way, Jason, it's 25 years that the the agency, buyer agency, as we know, and I remember, I've been 30th year is this July, and I remember when it came out, and then it became not just hey, when you have it, when you would like it to be, it was like no, no, this is state law, you're going to have it. So kudos to the not only the state of Utah and the way that it's represented itself. But guys, we're, we're, we're having to pick up some of our pieces here because of the stupidity of other states and other ways in which they've operated their business model. And uh, it, it, it's, it's, and it's something, yes, that we have to navigate through. But as you guys are the best of the best, the best also part, I think the opportunity for you, like Brenda Lee and others, guys, people are going to get out of the business because of this. That's a good thing because we all know there are organizations that should not even be in business. There are individuals that should not be in business and they give a scar or a damage to our industry. So the, the one of the beautiful opportunities for me was I've observed this is we're going to get away from, get to all the skimmers, all the part, possibly the part timers that really aren't treating this like a real profession. And I believe they're going to, there's going to be deeper opportunities for those that are what I would consider the professionals, the people who do this and grind out every single day to do it right. Uh, that, and that, that's why often it is the greatest gathering of real estate professionals. Why? Because you're professionals. You're not amateurs. This is an amateur hour. My observation, again, is the people who are most freaked out about it are people who don't have business, don't prospect don't have the skill sets, don't have the disciplines. And because of all the things they don't have, the only thing they had was a good market. And now that market not only is not that great, but the opportunities are requiring you to be disciplined, skilled, you know, mentally, mindset, certainty, confidence, transparency, clarity, the leadership principles that this organization at least strives, strives to teach and live by every single day. None of us do it perfect. But man, it is our commitment to where we're going to be the best of the best. So thank you, Brenda Lee. Anybody else? Any other thoughts, comments, uh, questions? Hey, what would you say when someone says this? Any any other thoughts? Hey, George. I literally um, talked to an agent yesterday. Yes, Steph Stephanie Barnes. Um, I talked to an agent yesterday that literally yep. did not know anything about the lawsuit. No information oh, wow. part time right. agent. I could just do this on the side. And she's like, What? And I said, Well, you better buckle up, read about it, figure it out. Yeah. Like, no information. Yeah. yeah. I, I, again, I know I've reiterated this, but if you didn't get a chance to, and I, I, I'm just, guys, the trainings that are going on in regards to the way in which we work with a buyer, the way in which we work with the seller, guys, if you will just not only refine what you're already doing, get better at what you're already doing, 
this this is nothing but an opportunity in my mind, even though, yeah, it'd be great if we could put that BAC on that MLS. But I mean, really ask yourself, what what is the major other issue? You already should have, to Jason's point, right? We already should have had a buyer agency sign. We already should have been discussing what agency is. We should have been discussing how commissions actually operate and work and are paid. So what's changed? No BAC on the, on the, on the thing? We come up with a few scripts and texts that can go back and forth between buyer. I mean, it, it, just like Justin and others have said yesterday, said, well, this is just kind of like, you know, how commercial real estate is done. Yeah. Sometimes there's a commission. Sometimes there's not. Sometimes you have to negotiate into the deal. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes the buyer pays it. Sometimes the seller pays it. It's called negotiations. And negotiations is not being a great, I used to say great faxer. I can't say that anymore, but a great uh, scanner of documents and hitting the computer button to send it. That's not negotiating. Negotiating is being a great leader in the way in which you communicate and get clear on what people's needs, desires, and wants are on both sides of the table and coming to some meeting of the minds. Not being just great at scanning documents. It's greater than that. And we all know that. That's the, the joke in the matter. But just, man, get serious about showing up, whether it's online in these meetings, whether it's in showing up in the morning meetings, the base camps. Get serious about becoming more of who you need to be every single day. It's the essence of what this organization is about. Becoming your very, 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 very best. Okay, any other thoughts, comments? I mean, thank you guys for, for what you're saying. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Brenda Lee. Anybody else? Al, Al just brought up in the chat box. I mean, this is how commercial and international markets have dealt with commissions all the time. So it's not something that's new. It's something that we can just get used to as residential agents. It's been happening all the yeah. time. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Amen to that. So I, I have a question. Please. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so um, you said yesterday um, we're one of ten states that have all has always had a, a BAC for the last twenty. All right. So is it's twelve states because just prior to you getting on, he said thirty eight states have not. So that makes sense. I just wanted to get that stat secure yeah because i think that's huge well it's it's it, and rec it's a little deeper than that and you, you can keep asking let me just make sure i interject on this it's it's 12 states that legislatively meaning their their state senators right state representatives right. insisted by law that there would be not only agency but a buyer broker and clearly yeah. explaining commissions so there's only 12 states in the entire country that thought that was a good idea of course, Missouri right. not being one of them. Otherwise, the lawsuit wouldn't have been in Missouri. Right. And if 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 we all as agents are explaining every part of those contracts, there's nothing that we're really needing to change. Correct. The only big change for us is the fact that you got to talk to a listing agent as to are you paying a commission, a partial commission, no commission, negotiate the commission. Mm -hmm. Or the buyer pays the entire commission. I mean, that 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 conversation, just as like Al and Jason just mentioned, that's been normal protocol in so many different avenues of real estate, nationally, commercially, internationally. It's just the nature of the beast. Right. But as a buyer's agent, going down the list before you show homes, you have to call every agent. It almost makes it more about the commission than it was before, which is exactly what they don't want. And because... I I, I, rarely I even totally look. agree with you, by the way. And it's just like it, it it defeats it to take it off the MLS, but I could see their narrow mindedness of it. But that needs to be brought out because, you know, why? Well, I'm I showing a, a property Mark, and I find out it's two percent. Go ahead. Right. And I question whether the judge will sign it asking the question as to, is this not having this on there? What the sell, you can change it to where the, on the MLS, this is what the seller is willing to pay a buyer's agent, but taking it off of the MLS, the question is, does that damage the seller or the buyer? And if we're trying to protect the community of buyers and sellers, then the question is, is that good for them? And I, 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 I am, I, yeah, I, I I don't know whether it'll happen or not, but I gosh, and I have a little bit just a glimmer of hope that it would sure be great if that. But I do think that as an organization, 
we need to set the standard because you know as well as anybody, everybody knows this, that oftentimes the buyer's agent is not as skilled. And to be that listing agent who's the ultimate professional, give clarity and transparency as to what this agent is dealing with. So the moment you know your home is going to be sold, you know, let's just say effective in July, you want to be that listing agent that says, hey, let me tell you what we're doing. We're either paying it, we're not paying it we we're negotiating on it or man this is the amount that you're going to get paid if you bring us an offer and if you can get really clear as a listing agent and you are the ultimate professional in that pathway then you're going to get a better chance not only of getting your home sold but you're given better representation you're giving more clarity transparency up front no one's playing the wishwashy guessing game is this is the agent strong enough to call the the, the listing agent is are they nervous to are they unsure do they just give up do they not bring the buyer you want to eliminate all the 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 anxiety or the the lack of clarity well before even the home is sold and hence that's why we're going to come up with these little scripts if you'd say or little you know e texts or emails however you want to send out that you can quickly as a listing agent give that but also on the flip side as a buyer you can quickly text that agent and say hey give me the lowdown is it this this or this and so that you're getting the information as a buying agent so that you are moving again with clarity and certainty to protect and elevate the client experience. So you're saying that even a showing company can disclose that for that listing agent or whatever, but it can't be on the MLS supposedly. If uh, you know what? It's another great question. On their settlement because that, you can't even put your listing yeah. agreement under your documents in your MLS. The, if they the question is, can showing, this. yeah, could, yeah, so my understanding of uh, what I've been reading on it is it's it's showing time. No. I think George might be frozen again. Jason, I Say have that a again. question. Jason, I... George, you're cutting in now. Uh, Jeanette has a question. Maybe you can hear this one. So this is maybe a premature question, or this might be a question everybody else knows the answer to, but me. I've never had experience with um, um, negotiating a buyer's agent commission. So there's going to be some training on that. Is that something that we do in addendum to the REPC and then do the escrow instructions? Are we going to have some training on exactly how to do that the right way? Because okay. I was right. always under the understanding you were... Okay supposed to negotiate commissions in yeah, the yeah. We'll, we'll definitely have training on how to ask. Um, there's two forms we can use. Um, I won't go through them today just because of time, but we will definitely have trainings on the right way to ask uh, for commissions in the contract and the right way to ask for commissions in uh, for the brokerage. So there's two different ways to do it. It's always been there. We've always had it, but um, we're going to We'll do some training on that. Yes, for sure. Thank you. And Jeanette, if hopefully I'm coming through clearly, but I would also say that, correct. I mean, one, the big change is, is that not literally within the REPC, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jason, but within the REPC, you're actually going to be able to address those commissions. There's no question that the UAR and the Board of Realtors, uh, you know, but based specifically UAR and whatnot, there's going to be some modifications with the contracts, uh, modifications with even the the, the uh, broker compensation uh, contracts. So the, you, you're going to see, I think, some some changes over these next 90 to 120 days that will be the forms you use. But then you're going to have license and liberty to discuss within the contract and within the rep seat the way in which agents are being paid. And it'll be, again, just another level of transparency, which I think is, you know, what the, the outcry of, of the public is, is we want more transparency. And is that, was that accurate? I think Jason, what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's always been a way to negotiate it in there. I think, I think the biggest thing is just having the right words put in there and we have the verbiage we have, we already have that designed. Will there, there be a few tweaks uh, for it because it's really just compensation. I think one of the biggest things that agents have the message that they've been giving out for years is that the seller has been paying these commissions to the buyer's agent, which is not correct. It's actually the seller's brokerage. The, a, the listing agent's brokerage is the one that's been paying these commissions out. And so when we present it from our seller that they're paying it, it's been a mis- 
the information has been displayed wrong for a long time. It's actually us as a brokerage that's offering, offering that. So it's, it will definitely be, it's not a hard thing to do. And we'll go through, we'll definitely do some training on how to get that in there, but there should be no reason you can't offer compensation. You can't, uh, and you can ask for compensation in, in the REPSI, which is a misconception for a long time. You can't talk about um, commission in the REPSI. It's not about asking the seller's brokerage for commission. It's about asking the seller to pay something to the buyer. Well, it, you can ask yeah. for closing costs, but you can't name com commissions until these certain forms come out. You can't uh, yeah, talk about you, commissions. You, you, yes, you, you can't. Go ahead, Jason. Yeah, absolutely. Rebecca, you can. It's it's just yeah. the way you word it. And we have, we have right. it uh, already. It's been around for three or four years by now. Uh, you you can definitely talk about it. So give me an example of how to word it. That doesn't it kind of go goes against everything I know. Sure. Uh, it. I'll just read it to you because it's really short. Seller's payment to buyer's real estate brokerage. This is what you put in the contract. Seller agrees to pay blank percent of the purchase price to buyer's brokerage. This payment shall be made in addition to any other compensation offered by the seller's brokerage to the buyer's brokerage. This provision and this addendum shall survive closing. So super simple, but it's not talking about compensation from the listing brokerage. It's talking about getting paid. This is, this, we're eliminating the need to go directly to the listing brokerage. You can go straight to the seller. It's been that way for years. Well, so I've always gone broker to broker contract whenever I had an issue with this. So you're saying using that verbiage, you can put it right into the offer. Yeah, you've always Correct. been able to go right to the offer. Because uh, the W uh, Washington County Board of Realtors just said the opposite in their meeting this week. <laughs> just to let you know. Yeah, and and it We're might very be more specific. Of just more explaining it to you and kind of reading it. I think we're well, talking about two different things. Okay. Any other questions? And Rebecca, you can get more into the detail on that, but I would just echo that again. It 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 can be done, and yeah, uh, I, I understand. And there was way back I mean. in the day where it couldn't be, and there was a day where it could. But that, where, where, that's not today. I mean, it's it's that changed a long time ago. I used to be of the opinion of yours, not even too many years ago. But uh, when that changed, or what I was, you know, first ingrained in, you know, thirty years ago, that changed, you know several years after just again just another level of transparency that the state of utah was leading out on well you okay, know any other I'm, questions I'm comments thoughts? medical stuff and so i just need to i try to stay on top of this for yeah. when i can yep. remove this medical yeah. stuff I just and, stay close with so. jason or russ on that stuff and of course you All got right. tammy down in the washington st george area too so just Thanks. but if any you, you know this if you just need to be even hand walk through any yeah, of those that's transactions why for anybody it applies to anybody online. guys yeah. guys Hey, I, 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 Russ tells me never to mention this, but I just want to give you perspective. Uh, uh, Russ and Jason, I just want to give you perspective. The thousands and billions of vol sales volume, right? Over these last 18 months, uh, those two guys, and then your compliance and your TCs and our brokers and the Rubies and the Tammies and others, and what, what, what these guys and gals have done over the last... 18 months, as you guys all know, many, unless, you, unless you're new to the company, you know, tr significant transitions with you know, principal brokers and our compliance and, you know, and, and moving through that process, guys, these guys literally today, Russ says, don't ever say this, but we literally over the last 18 months under their stewardship and watch have had zero lawsuits under their watch. There is ones that we have dealt with in the past, but if you're talking about current activity, under their watch and under their their guidance and leadership, uh, we have they, they are literally batting a thousand. It is incredible. So, kudos to to Jason and to Russ what they've been able to do and the rest of the supporting cast, uh, and of course you as agents doing it the right way and and being a peacemaker is really really cool. So Jason and both Russ, I don't think Russ is on the call today, but 
he is, but both of them just thank you so much in the entire department that uh, seems so, I know sometimes it seems so rigid and challenging with what we're doing and trying to protect everybody, but it is impressive. The thousands of transactions that happen and the thousands of transactions that don't happen and the way in which these guys have done it is incredible. Incredible. Could not be more happy. Uh, okay, any other thoughts? thoughts? I, I just, we've got four or five minutes left, but just, if, but if not, we can wrap up. But just, how would you handle this? I'm available. Of course, Jason, Russ, and the rest of you call after or, or get deeper into it. I'm happy to do that. Or I know Jason is also, but um, I know it may seem redundant. Some people are like, man, I'm sick of hearing about this stuff. But bottom line is we just want you to have the confidence to know that not only do we know that we've got it dialed in, but that you, you have a you have it dialed in. So look, if, if, if you've had it enough and you feel confident, then move forward. Know that business is usual until July. But man, start showing up more at the means. Get to the summit next week. Do the things that are necessary to become better every day and be the professional that this organization is about. And if, again, if there's any unanswered uh, uh, question, just reach out to Jason, me, whoever you need to, but get the answers. Don't sit in the dark. Don't sit in question marks. Uh, make sure you're being able to walk through this business today with absolute certainty and confidence as you lead and help others navigate through it, because you've got to be the starting point of that confidence. And we want to make sure that's happening for you. Okay, guys, unless there's anything else, anybody else? Also, just remember, uh, we'll, I love to see this many people on the call. We do these calls every Friday, except for the summit week. So if you do have questions, you're always welcome to jump on the compliance call Fridays at 11. So just a little plug for my compliance. In fairness, we took a little longer, Jason. Yeah, Jason, we took a little longer on this one, but normally your calls are what, 20 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, so George, we took a little longer just because we opened it up to everybody. But yeah, please go ahead. George, Greg Schwartz, how you guys doing? Appreciate your time. Um, just a quick Good. question on the, you bet, Greg. On, on the list side. What would be your recommendation to be competitive in the marketplace as we're competing against other agents um, to, to grab these listings? If you got other agents talking to sellers that saying, hey, we don't have to pay buyer commissions anymore, and they're just locking in like a 3%, commission built into the list agreement um do you recommend doing that to be competitive and then just deal with buyers as they come through if they're asking for commissions or do you want to hold strong because we've always pushed for that full six percent yeah one i would just one wait, I, 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 wait, I just about the, the, the competitive George, if you can hear me, start over on that answer. Pardon? Start start over on the answer. You cut out right as you were answering it. What I what I would be doing is I would get rid of. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I paused. I didn't say anything. I actually just stopped because I thought. Oh. Okay. So, Greg, what I what I what I would would focus on. Can you not hear me? It's it's cutting in and out a little bit. Okay, what what I what I would say is that I mean, is it is that better? No, I can hear you now. No, no better. Yes, it's better. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off. Okay, I'm gonna turn off my my video, which I know will clear up some of it. Just here, let me do something here. Okay, so Greg, what I, I hopefully that's a little bit better. What I what I would echo is one, I would be educating and being highly transparent. I would be really focusing in on. May I share with you how you're damaging yourself with a three percent commission, as an example, if that's what you were going to collect on a on a listing side, or whatever you know, whatever the commission is. But I would really educate the set in regards to a current market condition. I think that there will be a day, I think that it will be in 2025, where I think many of us and you, Greg, and maybe other agents will walk in there and go, hey, look, we're going to make it a part of the negotiation. This is a white hot market. I, let's make sure we bring these guys to the, let's bring this out to the market. Let's see what agents are willing to accept or how they negotiate that because it is a complete seller's market. So I think in today's market, I would get really focused in, in on the, the importance of 
of really educating and letting them know. And so I remember I, this is how I've always approached the agents that would sell homes for 500 bucks. I'd say, hey, may I share with you why that is problematic? May I share with you why you're hurting yourself? And they'll always say, well, how am I hurting myself? I'm saving money. Are you really? Because the fact is, is that if your home sells, they stop getting buyer leads. Well, it's somewhat of the same thing. If once that home sells, it's almost always better than an, paying a buyer agent commission. The question is, is are you damaging yourself more than you think you're helping yourself? And I, I really like to stick with them and say, man, if I'm the, if I'm the seller, like, answer me how it's possible for it to be a benefit to you to offer zero commission and still be able to know that buyer's agents are going to want to sell your home when your competitors are out there offering a, a commission of two, two and a half, three, whatever the number is, are you willing to take that risk? Because I don't think you gain anything. I think you're getting you know, hoodwinked here. I think you're getting sold on something that isn't true. And I want to be transparent with you. I want to tell the truth to you. I want to share with you what this market's really doing. And man, if you're willing to say there's no commission, I think that you're hurting yourself. Tell me how you're not. But I do believe that as markets improve and market situations continue to make it a listing or seller's market, I do think you can do that. But I do not believe that it is the right time for that conversation. Hey, Caleb, how are you? I, so Good. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. I know that, I mean, we, but that's another, you know, Greg, that's another great role play that we could have just another one we could work on and like, Hey, how are these other guys are doing it? And then we'll work from, okay, well, let me tell you where is your advantage to not doing that. And at the end of the day, yes, you could list it and you could say, Hey, you know what, for one or two weeks, we'll try it that way. But at some right. point, I think you're going to be wise enough to say, Hey, here's some commission that we need to offer out so that you're not blackballing your property in a buyer's market. Right. No, that makes sense. Market dependent. I love it. Thank you. Yep. yep. Okay. Good. Great question, Greg. Awesome question. Um, any guy, guys, anything else? Any other questions? And we'll wrap up here. Okay. Well, just know I'm kind of done on the fact of talking about necessarily the facts of why it's happened. What I want to work on is now the opportunities, just like that little role play with Greg. So just know that the mark, the, the way in which we're going to train, the things we're going to talk about, aside from some of the compliance stuff that we'll bring out to making sure you have proper scripts, proper dialogue, proper paperwork or contracts, we're going to make sure it happens. Beyond that, the whole focus point is how do we take advantage of the opportunity? How do we break down the objection so that they focus on the right stuff? And that's where we're going to spend the majority of our time over these next 60 to 90 or 90 to 120 days before this truly becomes implemented. But again, just like Miranda Olgaberry said, it is business as usual, ladies and gentlemen, but you need to be able to speak intelligently to where and what this suit is. And if you need further conversation on it, we certainly can talk to you about it. Uh, but at this point, we're going to move into, okay, and now how do we script? How do we dialogue? How do we improve our skills? How do we navigate the changes and make it an opportunity for all of us. Okay, guys. All right, Jason. Thank you. And Jason, you close us out. Any last things? No, I think you, I think you said it business as usual. Let's uh, if you do have questions, reach out. There's plenty of ways we can do it. So good job. You guys thank have you. a wonderful weekend. <laughs>